Good morning, everybody. I want to just give an update on my barn. I have been quite busy working with this, and I actually even wanted to put a video out a couple days ago, but I just had some camera troubles and audio troubles on the camera, and, and uh, so I said, forget it. It's more important to get my barn done than it is to put out these videos. My horses are not where I want them to be in different spots, and uh, and I just want to get this done. So um, I had a good start over last weekend when the kids were here helping me, but then I ran out of wood. So I went to the woods actually twice. I went up one day and got uh, uh, three trees on my wagon and brought them back. And two of the th three trees were actually semi rotten. And so I surely didn't want to use them in this project. I want to only use good wood because I don't want to do this again. So um, I am, as I'll show you, I'll try to go through how I'm doing this. And uh, as you can see, I'm really building it very strong, very rugged. And uh, as a lot of you people know, horses are very destructive. And so I will try to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And so let's, uh, let's start here. So this wood is all tamarack or larch, a different name for it is larch. And uh, as you can see, I've actually got one stall here almost done. Um, this is lady stall here. And, uh, but we'll talk about how I'm do going about doing things. To start with this horse barn was built 30 years ago because that's when we moved here. And there was, as you remember from a previous video, when there was a cement curb down through here. And I wish I had taken that out then. If I realized how easy it was to get it out of there, I probably would have. But um, I thought it was sunk into the cement, so I thought it'd be quite a job. It turned out not to be not that big of a job. So anyways, we left it there and built over the top of it. That's why, we had, that's why our decks were so high. Um, so now we took that out of there and we're starting from scratch. And what I normally would do with building a horse barn, I always have, and most people just do, is just use two inch planking for everything they do. And a couple different species that are good is, is tamarack is good. Uh, hamlock is very good for horse barns. There's plenty of hardwoods that are good. It just kind of depends on what's available to you. Um, I've used popple or, or um, aspen that we have in this area, and that, that makes a pretty good horse barn. Um, so like I said, it just depends on what you have available to you. I decided this particular time I'm going to go with the tamarack, and I'm going to make it a lot, lot heavier duty than I normally would have done. So what I've done is, to start with, I put these six by six posts up underneath this beam here and they are not connected into the concrete in any way they are connected up top there's going to be some more reinforcement to do up there but then i had my neighbor weld together a couple angle iron to make a channel like this it's four inches wide and i put half inch lag bolts i think they're three inches long into that six by six so now i have my four inch pieces of wood, their random widths. Um, so some are as wide as 10 inches and some are as narrow as six inches. And so what I've done is set it up so they would just slide down into that channel iron on the back side. And on the front side, I have two by sixes bolted to the concrete. The top one is the original one. The bottom we ended up replacing because it was it was so right and, and rotting out so we replaced that and so i have two by sixes nailed into that those the, the vertical two by sixes nailed into the horizontal ones and they're four inches apart so these big heavy um four by whatever they happen to be are just dropped into those slots last year i had cut out a bunch of these and you'll see the floor is made from those. I decided to use them on the floor because I wanted on the walls, I wanted to have more of the fresher look. And I knew I had to replace, had to buy, get more. So I just decided to um, go with the dark colored ones that were sitting outside and put them on the floor. I wanted to have some slope to my stalls. So I have a two by four across the front there 
and then I go to, went to a one and a half inch piece, down to a one inch piece, and this end of the of floorboards are sitting right on the ground. So I have a slope, I don't know how much it is, of one inch, maybe two inch slope um, to the back end. These are 10 feet long. The way I had to make these stalls because of my center beam is the six by sixes had to be underneath the center beam to support the building. So that had to be the back of my stall. This is actually a longer stall than I would need, um, but it works pretty good. I just make a, a larger manger than I really would have to have. So I put the floorboards in, the four inch floorboards in at this angle so it has a slope, so it's all coming back here. But I wanted more than four inches for a deck. I wanted a six inch deck, meaning six inches high off the ground. So I chose to put another layer of two by sixes on top. Another reason for doing that is if I need to replace boards, I can just replace the two by two inch boards that are on top and the four inch boards below will stay as is. I'm hoping to get some mats for these stalls. This is a mat I bought last or well, in the spring from Tractor Supply and it's not anywhere near big enough but it still helps so that hopefully the 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 urine will will, will kind of slope back towards the end of the stall. Um, I do have a, a friend of mine up the road works at a quarry and he actually has there are some um, belting that the quarry uses and they're five feet wide and the one roll he has is 50 feet long and I can't get it till spring but he said I can get that and then I can cut it so that I'd have belting five feet wide for all these stalls. Now these stalls are five and a half feet wide so from from here to here is five and a half feet. If you make straight stalls too wide for a particular horse they will actually get into more trouble because they tend to try to turn around in their stalls. Um, my big horses, the five and a half feet wide is just fine and it would take an extremely large horse to have this stall too small for them. A stall like this for my colts would actually be a little risky because they could actually spin their butts around at the front here and get into trouble. But my colts aren't going into here, it's just for the big horses. So, let me think here. Um, so we'll have another layer of two inch boards on top here and then since all of the boards end up at the end of the stalls and I'm just taking my chainsaw and cutting them so they're not perfectly square there's little gaps here and there but because of that I clean this barn with a skid steer and instead of taking a risk of hitting one of those uneven edges I chose to put down a hardwood bumper along the bottom here. So I think this is ash, I think this is a piece of popple here. And so what I did, I just tacked them on for now, but I put, I cut this at an angle so that as I'm sliding along, I, I'm not gonna hitch this second one. It'll just, if it was square, I might end up hitting it at an angle. I'll just, my bucket will just slide along here and go right onto the next one and right on down through. So another thing I'm going to do is continue up with four inch pieces here and I'll probably put two or three high here I'm not sure how high I would go but it's going to end up looking somewhat like that stall over there it'll go up quite high and then it'll slope down here at an angle and I will just lag them into there um, the purpose of that is if you have horses that don't get along they will tend to fight with their neighbor. And by having that petition at the front, it'll stop them from fighting. If they're really good with each other, it doesn't really matter. But I periodically will buy a new horse, so it takes a while for them to get used to each other. This just eliminates any fighting. People have wondered and even asked why I use straight stalls. And um, I'm not against box stalls in any way, but for my situation, these stalls work so much better in my opinion um they the horses get so used to these stalls they lay down these stalls they're very comfortable in these stalls 
And it's so much easier for me to come out in the morning, since I'm working my horses on a regular basis, I come out in the morning and I will brush my horses in their stalls. The harnesses are directly behind them, so I will grab the harnesses and harness them right up. A lot of times they will get harnessed up even before breakfast and they stand in the barn for a long period of time with the harnesses on before I go and do the job I'm, I want to do that day. Whereas if they were loose in a box stall, you'd have to take them out of the box stall, cross time somewhere, and put the harnesses on. And then if you aren't ready to use them right off, you can't really just put them back in the box stall loose because they're gonna roll and lay down and get into troubles. Um, yes, you could time in the box stalls, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a box stall. But anyways, it doesn't matter. If that's, if, if that's the type of barn you wanna do, go ahead. Um, that's great. It does take off a lot more room. Um, most box stalls are, you know, 10 by 12 or whatever like that. And it takes a lot more room than straight stalls. So you can get a lot more horses in a particular area. And for me, since I work them pretty consistently every day, um, this is so much handier to do. Like I said earlier, we ran out of wood the other day. So I went and got some wood twice. And uh, my first load was a, um, I cut four trees and one of them wasn't not any good at all. And two of them were half rotted or starting to go bad. They're still usable for some projects, but I didn't want to use them for this project. And, but I wanted to bring them all home. So I brought them all home and sawed up that one tree and got a little bit more done. But then yesterday I had to go back up and get three more trees and I made sure I found three good ones. So I've got a whole wagon load out there now that I will saw up today and continue on this process of my barn. I've had a few people ask about why I don't have waters in their stalls also. And I can talk to you a little bit about that at some point. Um, the process of getting water out here is a little bit complicated even so, um, but I will talk to you about that later on. I'm really, really curious about your, what your thoughts are on stalls. Um, please put in the comments um, what you think I'm doing wrong. It's fine by me. It's uh, go right ahead. But also talk to me about what you like to have in a stall. Um, even as you're looking at my stall, of course, probably by the time you see this, it's going to be too late to change. But um, it would be nice to hear your, you know, your thoughts on, on how to go about doing things even a little bit different. Um, one thing I haven't shown you is the mangers. So this stall here is basically done. Although, as I told you in another video, this wall is messed up because it's tipped out. And so I had a, a, my last board, I had to kind of taper it to make it fit. But that wall, we hopefully be going out next year. So this manger here. Okay, so as far as dimensions, uh, that's another thing I want to show you. This, from the manger, back to the end of the stall is exactly seven feet. Um, that's almost a little big for some horses. I like to have the horses be able to stand on, comfortably stand on and lay down in the stall. But if I keep it as short as possible, the manure will actually end up dropping over the deck. And that's why I like a higher deck here. Deck meaning what they're standing on, and that's six inches high. Um, but even that, because of the way I clean my barns with the skid steer, as I'm pushing this through, a lot of it will actually go up onto the deck, which that was the advantage of the high, high deck I had earlier. It didn't do that, but uh, that's not a big deal. But so that, anyways, that's seven feet from the end of the stall up to the manger. And the manger is a long manger. It's like three feet of a manger. Um, and that's way more than you need but remember, the way I have to do this is that last, this post, it has to be underneath that carrying beam. So I have to do it this way and I wanna have my stall just to seven feet and six and a half would have been fine also. But then everything else, it has to be manger. I have other years when I've made horse stalls, um, I've actually built the floor up so the horses don't have to reach quite so far down to clean up their hay, but uh, I didn't do that this year, this time. Um, and most of the times when I have done it, 
they've actually broken out over a period of years. I have, and you always do get this when you have straight stalls, once in a while you get a horse that actually gets his foot over into the manger. Sometimes as much as both feet over in the manger. And if you've just got a, a light duty floor down there, they'll just break through it anyway. So um, that's why I've actually taken the ones out that I had and now I'm, I'm not going to, I'll just leave it as is. This, this is the height that I'm going to want this top two by six. And I will drill a hole in here probably to be able to put the rope through to tie them. And what I'll do here is, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it. I just got cross pieces here to hold this up temporarily, but this will be solid boards all the way down through. Um, the very last board, I'm gonna keep it off the floor because these two buys that I have on the floor that are replaceable, they are actually 10 feet long, so they go underneath, they will go underneath the manger. So when I replace them, I need to be able to pull them back out of there. I'm trying to think of anything else that I could share with you that might be of help to someone that's building a barn. Um, even though this barn is built this way, extremely heavy duty like this, when I first moved here, I no way could I have afforded to do what I'm doing today. Um, I didn't have a sawmill. Um, I was young and broke and, and uh, you know, now I can do this and it will, should last until I'm 100 years old. I'll have to replace it probably by then. <laughs> but, uh, of course, that's not gonna happen. Um, but anyways, it's so nice to be able to make it this heavy because just using two inch plank, they will break them over time. But if you have a simple way to replace them, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, I chose to do these big planking and I think it's gonna work great. The walls themselves are just just a little bit over four feet high. Um, and it's amazing. I have had horses kick, you know, fighting with their neighbors and actually kick, and they've actually put their hind feet, one hind feet up over a pretty high wall. So having these high walls like this eliminates, it takes quite a horse to be able to kick over a four foot wall and get their feet over it. But if you're just down at like the three feet, they can kick and put their foot over it. So it pays to have these higher walls to make sure that does not happen. Well, I think that's it for what I have to show you now. We will get this barn done and then I will show you the complete project, hopefully. And uh, maybe I'll think of some other things that I hadn't spoke about that I can tell you about at that time. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, for new subscribers out there, first off, I'd like to welcome you but also tell you that most of the time on my videos i'm actually working my horses and showing you how i what i do with my horses but sometimes um, there's projects like this that we'll be doing and uh, um, this has to be done also so i want to show you this besides all the other stuff i do actually with the horses so we don't even have any horses in the barn to show you but just to show you at least uh, or the big horses but we do have the colts in here, so I will give you a peek at them. And they're doing great. I just want to get this project done, and I might even be able to start doing a little more training here in the next few weeks. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.